Okay. Uh, the balance between the, the people and the government? Well, the, the balance is that you have to talk to both. Um, we are, I'm, I'm a, uh, an accredited uh, diplomat, accredited to the government of Yemen. And, and uh, therefore, you know, I have a responsibility. I have to talk to the government because that's, you know, ambassadorial diplomatic relations are government to government. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we need to, we need to also uh, be sensitive to the people and to, and to reach out to them. And that's why the Secretary's visit was so important, uh, the town hall meeting that she did that, that addressed uh, a broad cross-section. Uh, in my own travels around, uh, around Yemen, uh, I always uh, try to speak to university students, uh, to, to chambers of commerce, to other, uh, to other uh, elements of the society outside of the government. Uh, because again, I think it's important for uh, the people in Yemen to hear directly from us about our own thoughts and our own ideas. Yeah. Can I, uh, 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 we have a, a paying bread <coughs> looking for jobs. And then I went to Qatar, and in which, you know, they're looking for qualified people. Is there any kind of program within the U.S. to actually take this population that's willing to work and eager to work? Some of them are high school graduates, some of them are graduates of the University of Sana'a, and they just cannot <coughs> find jobs. Is there any programs, number one, to help these people be trained so they can go to the Gulf states and work in, in cooperation with the Gulf states where you give them qualified employees who speak the Arabic language and, and can actually help not only Yemen but, but those countries, number one. And number two, what is the likelihood of uh, Yemen being part of GCC because we think that is really the long-term solution of creating an econ economy that can support a growing population and that is the best way to counter terrorism and extremism because poverty and helplessness is the one thing that extremists look for to get these young people. Thank you. Um, uh, in fact, uh, in the 10-point uh, plan that uh, was developed uh, by the McKinsey uh, Company and endorsed uh, by uh, the government of Yemen, one of the, one of the 10 points is um, is uh, uh, creating about 200,000 jobs for Yemenis in, uh, in uh, the Gulf. And in fact, uh, in, uh, in recent years, uh, uh, there have been a number of opportunities developed for more Yemenis to, uh, to go to the GCC states uh, for employment purposes. Now, um, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, my own view is that this is a short-term fix. Uh, we shouldn't look at this as the answer. Uh, first of all, it's unlikely uh, that, uh, uh, that the Gulf states would ever be in a position to absorb uh, a significant portion of the, of the uh, labor being generated. Uh, at, this, uh, at this particular moment, uh, Yemen has uh, about 700,000 uh, births a year. Uh, uh, new uh, additions to the population, and the ability, you know, to, to look at export of labor as a solution to economic problems, I think, is uh, very limited. Uh, and what what I've said is that, you know, my own view, uh, what we should really be looking at is developing the Yemeni economy so that it can absorb Yemeni labor. I think it's better socially, it's better economically. Uh, for Yemenis to work in Yemen than it is to send them off to Saudi Arabia or the GCC states. Uh, and that uh, I, I would hope that we would get to a point where Yemen exported stuff and not people. Um, and so, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've looked. Uh, uh, the Germans, of course, are very involved in uh, supporting uh, vocational training in Yemen. Uh, that's a, an area that we can also take a look at. Uh, one thing that the Yemenis are very interested in, where we have uh, a great uh, competitive advantage, is in uh, development of junior colleges. And they're uh, really looking at these two-year colleges that produce IT specialists or medical technicians or other kinds of, of skills that you don't get in a vocational training uh, program, but that may not also require a four-year degree uh, to help develop that as a, as a way to build up the uh, skill set for Yemeni workers so that, uh, again, uh, factoring into the development of the private sector there, we can ensure that as the private sector in Yemen grows, they'll have available to them the kinds of, of skilled uh, uh, workforce that they need in order to succeed.
How about the engineering yeah, for the GCC? Can, 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 can we, yeah. Welcome, Ambassador to the State of Michigan. Uh, my name is Dr. Al Ghazali, and I'm a Yemeni American. I am, I can say, the first elected official in the State of Michigan for the city of Amtrak. I was a candidate in the Democratic Party, by the way. I'm Democrat. I was a candidate for the State Trip District 15. As well, I was uh, also elected the mayor for the city of Amtrak. Um, you mentioned earlier in your talk that we want some people from the community, Yemeni American, who know basically the both things, is American as well as Yemenis. I can't be honest with you and say that we face an extremists on this side and the other side. As an, an, uh, an elected official, as well as involved in politics, we have some trust, some extremists from the end of this town or the state. As well, when we go back there, and, and I was, I found it really hard to reach to the embassy to talk to a consular or to somebody in the U.S. Uh, embassy in, in, in Yemen. Um, now knowing you, I know I met the previous ambassador uh, when we meet the President Talib in, in Washington. We like to help. We like to open communication. Because you mentioned earlier that we want to make sure to build bridges and say, hey, this is American. We are American. Okay, we like, of course, the homeland of Yemen, but we're also American citizens. We're like this country. My grandfather served in World War II. My father worked Chrysler for 35 years. I'm here, my son sits here, my daughter's here. So we, some of us been here like fourth or fifth generation in the state. Uh, we are here to help you. Whatever you need, you have my card and I will give you nothing. Here. <laughs> I'm a president of the L3 American Emily uh, Council in the city of Hamtramck. And you can give them to the ambassador now. <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I probably um, would like to meet with you again there. And here, if you need anything, let us know. We have my card, we have my email. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, should, we, uh, should we take one from this side? Okay. Yeah. I would like to thank you for coming to Way to State as fine uh, education institution and research institution which I'm proud to be part of an employer. And also would like to thank you for visiting Taz University and Sanaha University, and you've been very involved. Um, as, and also I'm glad to hear the uh, no tone from your comment about the no partnership with, between Yemen and the United States. Um, my question will be focused about education, because I belong to an organization that promotes higher education within here in the United States among Yemeni Americans and back home as well. And is there any program or initiative that can place the Yemeni, as he said, the Yemeni Americans in Yemen to share their knowledge and expertise, especially uh, people who've been through uh, college here and have some expertise, to share them with the Yemeni society back there. Uh, we see a lot of visits to Yemen from here, from U.S. generals, from intelligence officers and um, diplomats, but we didn't see the uh, other side of the uh, American society going there, like education institution leaderships. Th Dean Thomas is here. We have the, uh, the Secretary of State has the ME, uh, IP partnership. We didn't see the Yemeni representatives in their partnership. We would like to see Wayne State to be more active in that. So I'm looking to see if there is any initiative that the embassy can support or share with the many American organizations to, to do that part. Uh, no, no, thank you for that question. It's, it's an important issue. And, and certainly, um, the answer is we, we very much want to do that. And we very much want to move in that direction. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, um, in terms of some of the, the existing uh, long-standing U.S. programs like Fulbright and, and some of these others, uh, we haven't been able to send uh, Americans to Yemen because of security concerns. Uh, and, uh, and that is going to be a factor that we're going to have to take a careful look at uh, because, uh, you know, for, for everybody's interest, uh, frankly, we want to make sure that uh, as Americans come to Yemen, that they can have very good experiences, they have very positive experiences, that everything uh, works out okay. 
but uh, uh, but uh, as we move forward, and as hopefully we can take care of some of these security issues, uh, we we want to move absolutely in the direction that you're talking about, and have uh, not only Yemeni Americans but more broadly uh, American citizens come to Yemen to spend time to do uh, research to to work, to teach in uh, Yemeni uh, institutions, uh, and, uh, and to, to do uh, just a, a, a better uh, job of representing the United States and, and demonstrating the broad diversity of uh, not only the United States, but of U.S. engagement with Yemen. Our students on the aisle have a question. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Nicole, I'm here. And I just wondered, um, I'm interested in women's rights, and I'm interested in connection with development. I wonder what priority does the State Department place on women's rights in terms of um, the promotion of democracy in the Middle East? Well, a very high priority. And uh, in fact, again, uh, as part of uh, Secretary Clinton's visit, uh, she, uh, she met uh, with uh, a number of leaders of, of uh, organizations uh, that were particularly uh, concerned with the whole issue of child marriage. Uh, in the child brides, uh, including with uh, Najud Ali, uh, the young woman uh, who uh, wrote the, the book about her experience uh, as a child bride married when she was 10 years old. Uh, and so, um, and, and the secretary was very clear in, uh, in saying that uh, uh, promoting gender equality is going to be an important part of what, uh, what we want to work on in, in uh, Yemen. Uh, and, uh, and certainly, as we go around and, and speak, uh, we do make a, a special effort to, uh, uh, to ensure that there's a good participation by women in, in uh, these uh, various activities, uh, uh, to uh, talk about the role of women in uh, the economy uh, and uh, the recognition. I, I think that, that one of the points that I've tried to emphasize in my own uh, discussions with Yemeni audiences is, is what we see, you know, historically, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world, whether you're in Latin America uh, or in the Middle East or in East Asia, uh, there's a direct correlation between female literacy uh, and uh, economic growth, uh, uh, declining uh, birth rates. Uh, uh, educated women make sure that their children are educated. Uh, they uh, make sure that their children are healthier. Uh, and so, um, you know, th that, that when, you, when you educate a woman, then you contribute to the development of society in a way that grows exponentially into the future. Uh, so uh, so uh, as we develop these programs, as we think more about how we can help uh, with the economic development in the society, uh, the role of women is going to be very much a part of our calculation. Um, I didn't speak the secretary. Okay. What uh, Yemen's comparative advantage is in terms of developing its economy. And uh, I would say that one is its strategic location. Uh, the fact that uh, Yemen is, uh, is uh, the, the doorway, the gateway to uh, the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, and uh, also, of course, has long standing economic ties to uh, East Africa. And so uh, uh, it, it seems to me, and then the other comparative advantage that Yemen has is this large population of, of uh, young people. And so, uh, you know, I think that uh, private sector development should really look at the kinds of products uh, that, uh, that Yemen can develop uh, that, uh, that can take advantage of this, uh, of this pool of uh, labor and, uh, and its proximity to uh, important markets and really look at how to develop those. Uh, but it's something that it will require work going forward. Does Iran play significant role in Yemen at the moment? Well, I think this is a matter of great dispute. Uh, um, there are certainly people who believe that the Iranians are unhealthily involved in uh, promoting the uh, Houthi rebellion in the north. Uh, the Houthis are uh, Zaidi Shia. Uh, they're uh, they're uh, somewhat different from the, uh, the Shia sect that's the population in Iran, uh, but nevertheless uh, uh, there is uh, a relationship there, and so uh, it is uh, uh, it is an issue that uh, that uh, people are concerned with. But beyond that, uh, really, Iran has not been active in the last couple of years. Question. Uh, 
will come to a stage with uh, uh, more <coughs> state of uh, My question is, Ambassador, uh, as your uh, knowledge and experience, what do you think are the most urgent problems? Well, um, what, what I would say is that, is that we, we face uh, short-term and long-term challenges. Uh, the the short-term challenge is certainly the, the counterterrorism challenge and violent extremism. Uh, and both for, for you know, our own national security as well as uh, for the security of Yemen, uh, we need to eliminate the capacity of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and other violent extremist organizations uh, from, uh, uh, from their ability to operate uh, in Yemen, to use Yemen as a base uh, for planning and organizing themselves, uh, to do their training uh, and uh, to conduct attacks, uh, both inside of Yemen and uh, um, uh, in the region, uh, as well as in the West of the United States. So, so in the short term, uh, uh, so much rests on our ability to, um, to reduce uh, this, uh, this threat from violent extremist organizations. But again, saying that, recognizing that in order to eliminate violent extremism entirely and uh, to build strong uh, defenses against it inside of Yemen requires that we address uh, these critical economic challenges, particularly economic challenges, uh, that the society faces. Uh, poverty, uh, uh, lack of employment opportunities, lack of optimism for the future, and a lot of the social issues that go with that, uh, education, health, some of these other uh, demographic issues that are great challenges. And so um, if we say that uh, our objective is the elimination of violent extremism in Yemeni society, or at least the reduction to, uh, to uh, an insignificant level, uh, then uh, the, the answer is that it's not going to happen unless we also uh, are successful in addressing some of these other issues. Well, one more, the young lady by the window. Hi, my name is Aisha Wan, and I'm a political science student here at Wayne State. I was actually wondering um, about the Majud Ali case. I read the book, and uh -huh. I just wanted to ask you how effective do you believe legislation has been since the case broke out concerning child marriage and women's rights? Well, it's, uh, it, it's a good question, and of course, uh, unfortunately, the, um, the actual legislation uh, in the parliament has been stalled because of uh, opposition from some of the more conservative elements in the society. Uh, and so it has not uh, made as much progress as we would have hoped uh, that, that it would. Uh, it's, uh, it's still there. Uh, there are a number of organizations in Yemen now that are working on, on this. Uh, uh, Najud herself is uh, very much uh, active and, and a part of, of all of this. And, and so uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll keep working on it. And hopefully uh, her case, even if it hasn't resulted yet in the passage of legislation, uh, at least has raised consciousness in the society about the, the dangers of, of child marriage. Uh, it, beyond uh, just the social issues, uh, uh, the, uh, the marriage of these young girls has uh, significant implications in terms of their health, the health of their children, uh, other kinds of very negative social developments that, uh, that uh, accompany uh, child marriage. And so uh, trying to work on all of those and to continue to raise consciousness in the society uh, that this is a, a negative.